Sophia from Nomad Effect here to give you another update on our modifications to our 1988 Toyota Land Cruiser. This week we're talking front brakes. Believe it or not, these are new and we just installed them not even that long ago, probably like a month ago and I know they look pretty rusty but that's because in Miami it rains a lot especially in the summer so these have been out in the elements and pretty vulnerable to the rust that happens when it rains. So let me just take you back a few weeks to when we installed it and show you exactly how we did it. So this all has to come off somehow. I'm not exactly sure how it comes off. So the first thing we want to do is get the locking hub off. You use a 10 millimeter socket and you, it's probably more effective when this is off to use an impact gun, um, but I don't have the right attachment right now for my impact gun, so I'm just gonna use this ratchet. It's a really good idea to have something uh, that's quite clean to place everything down on as you go, so that, that way when you're putting it all back together again, you can just put it all back in the opposite order. So there should be six bolts in total. And once you get those six bolts out, this should just slide out. There's actually not a lot of grease in this. There should be a lot more. So we're gonna have to make sure we pack this with grease when we put it all back together again. The next set of nuts you wanna take off with a 14 millimeter. I struggled to get these off on the other side yesterday by hand. So I'm gonna use this ratchet. Uh, if you had it, if you had some way of locking this out, or if the brake calipers were still on, you'd definitely be able to get these out a little bit easier by hand, but I'm just gonna use the ratchet gun because I don't have any way of locking this out and stopping it from turning. Scratch that. I'm gonna use a 12 millimeter socket to get these off with the ratchet gun. So you got six of those off. There's some little cone washers that are actually like pushed down to, um, to center this, this locking hub in. And they're a little bit tricky to get out. I've seen online a lot of different ways of getting them out, but the one that seemed to work for us yesterday was to just tap on the outside a few times until they pop out. was an ideal situation right there. <laughs> okay, once you get them started, they're on there pretty tight generally. You can just grab them with a pair of pliers and you should be able to wiggle them off. Yesterday I couldn't see it very well because there's a lot of grease in the way, but today it's pretty clear. And uh, there's a circlip in there, circlip, spring washer, I don't know what you call them but um, I don't have a circlip or spring washer removal tool. So I'm just gonna get a screwdriver under each side and I'm gonna attempt to just like spring that out. There isn't really a way for me to show you how, how this goes, but if you Google this, if you check this out online, there's a lot of people that talk about trying to get these out. And it's not easy actually. It's probably easier to get it off than to get it on though. Yeah. Much, much, much later. Finally got it. Longest thing in history, pretty much. Um, the way I did it was to twist the two screwdrivers against each other. So one on one side and one on the other side, like so. And I just I braced them against each other and flexed it out. Uh, that took me way too long. And I really should invest in a, the right tool to do this. But for four jobs total in my whole entire life, it seems crazy. Okay, now we have that off. Dirty. Getting dripped on. Uh, I'm getting dripped on with grease or oil or whatever the hell it is that's coming out of here. I feel like you might have a dip oil leak into this thing. Good. Yep. Yep. Gross. 
Okay, now this is where your 52 millimeter comes in. And there's actually two nuts that you gotta get off. There's one, and then there's like a, a weird kind of washer, and then there's another one. First one. This is the washer I was talking about. This is the second one. If anything's left inside here, should be another washer and a bearing, but I should be able to pull the whole hub off right now. Just like that. And you'll see a very dirty, greasy bearing. I'm just gonna use a rag and I'm gonna try and clean up this a little bit. It's gross. Now, Sophia's gonna quickly clean this up with a wire wheel while I go and knock the hubs out, knock the studs out, sorry, so I can remove the hub from the disc brake and uh, I'll be back in a second. What we need to do is separate the hub from the rotor. You can see that our new rotor here includes this piece here. So basically this, this thing just separates from that line upwards. And these studs for the wheels come all the way through to the back. So we have to knock them out. Now, there's lots of the right ways to do this. Um, I don't have a brass hammer and I'm not going to go and spend money on one just for this job. So the way I do it is to grab a lug nut and I've already, I've already hit this lug nut before. As you can see, it's, it's kind of damaged. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put this lug nut onto the end of this and hit it really hard with a hammer and it should just come out. six of these to go, sorry six of these in total, doesn't need to be done up tight or anything like that. My studs are really old so some of them just don't finger tighten, they got a little bit of rust on them. Uh, the car's been sitting without the wheels on for a little while too, which also doesn't help with that fact. When they're a little bit harder to get on, it's gonna be a little bit harder to unscrew this bolt once this is pushed through and loose because it's just gonna turn. But you can just, just push it back up into the, the hub enough to where it has enough grip, enough grab, that you can undo this and you'll still be able to get the stud enough, out enough, out easily, sorry. Just like that. I mean, all you could use a ratchet gun. But... <clears throat> and last one. And yesterday I found this was a little bit rusted to this, but looks like today it's gonna come off like pretty easily. Okay, and that's the rotor off. For whatever reason, mine seems to have the wrong grease in it, so I'm just going to give this a bit of a clean. And I'm going to repack this with some uh, high temperature grease. So. So we can have a little bit of longevity out of this baby. Ah, uh, that's gross. That's, that's not helping anybody. Now, 
philosophy is cleaning up the rust off the, the inside of the, the brake rotor protecting plate thing. I'm gonna just shove a little bit of paper in the front there. And I'm gonna shove a little paper in the, oh, in the other side as well. Just to stop anything from getting in there. And I'm gonna hit all this with the wire wheel. So normally I'd put some uh, rust converter on there and I'd paint it up and stuff like that, but it feels like these uh, deteriorate too quickly. It kind of isn't worth it. But I want to at least try and get some of the surface rust off there if I, if I can, especially on the back. Especially on here. So what I'm using is a angle grinder with a, just a wire brush put on the end of it. Um, I'm not gonna go too crazy with this, but like I said, I like putting shiny parts on the car, so it seems silly to put a really shiny brake rotor on here without having this all looking really nice as well. Trust is all gone. It's looking much nicer now. Still pissing out some, some gunk. But it's looking much better. <clears throat> now, installing the new rotor is basically just doing everything in opposite, backwards basically. Um, so you want to place this over the top. Making sure you have your two lake locating bolts and your um, studs lined up. Like so. I don't know whether I um, showed this on the sequencing, but you have to make sure you take out these two 14 millimeter bolts before you start tap, like before you uh, start removing the, the rotor from the hub, because these are the, also the first things that you put back in. Car wash going on over here. Car wash for the Sophia's been cleaning up these disc brake protectors while I've been over there installing the studs. Yeah, looks pretty but, seductive. Yeah, baby. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Got to get it nice and greasy. Yeah, you really can't go coat too. You can't really put too much grease on this. I don't think. Like, it's probably not good to like fill it so it doesn't move. But I think that. Getting as much grease on there as you can is a pretty good plan. Doing it in reverse of the way we took it off. First thing back on. Let's put my fancy new shiny rotor on there without trying to get as much grease onto the rotor as I can. Okay, so you want to try and push this back as far as it'll, and make sure it's pushed back in there as far as it'll go. So that, that way the bearing fits really well. I'm also gonna clean up the, the bearing and the washer. And I'm gonna put new grease on this as well. Having some shop towels around or a rag is gonna be a friend for you. I'm gonna take this opportunity to really hammer home some grease into my bearings. To do that, you like you look at the little rim here, and you really wanna try and force grease down. When these are new, you can actually get grease to come out the other side, but because this is already kind of packed with grease, it's kind of it's pretty hard to get it to to go all the way through. But just do your best. If you got new bearings, then that's great. And again, this is uh, Valvoline high temperature grease. Okay, so that's the first thing that goes back in and it needs to go all the way back up into there. So. Next thing that goes back in is this locating washer. And it's got a little notch on it and you'll see there's a notch on the thread there and that'll line up. So, then we've got the first nut. I don't think mechanics are supposed to have hands like mine because I can't get my fingers into little holes like this one. It's gonna just like slightly tighten it with this 52 millimeter. I've seen people use a chisel 
and a hammer to actually knock these big nuts out. I haven't attempted it, but I decided it wasn't gonna be my was gonna be the best idea for me when I have seen it, but you guys could always give that a crack if you don't have a 52 millimeter socket. Okay, and then there was a, sorry, I should have shown that, shouldn't I? Okay. So there's a, there's a washer, there's that funny looking washer that goes in between the two nuts, and then the second nut goes on. Okay, and I'm just gonna like hand tighten that one up as well. Okay, so I've just wiped down the back of this. I'm gonna wipe down the front of this too, before I put it in. It's not like crazy, it doesn't have to be clean, but the grease that was in there was really dirty. And I'm gonna put a bit of grease on the back before I put it in. And I'm gonna put a bit of grease in here as well. Okay. This guy goes on, and there's um, there's two little locating tabs here, so you just have to line those up, and then all the other bolts should go off after that. Might be an idea to need. You might need to turn this a bit. Do it. Just my pins now. Boom. Okay, she's on. All right, so doing everything in reverse. The what are they called? The cone wash is going first. Lucky Sophia's here, who remembers all the names and everything. Then you have your little lock, lock washers. And then you have your nuts. So using the 12 millimeter socket, I'm gonna just do these up. Um, yesterday, when I was doing the other side, I had the drill on high power and it actually like spread a few of the, um, the split washers. So I'm just going to turn this down today and just see how I go. If not, I might actually even use a, a hand wrench. She's on. Now, I have to get this C-clip back on. I'm not going to embarrass myself by doing this on camera because it'll probably take me a while. So I'll uh, be back with you in a minute. Got it? You did? Yeah. I just got the C, the C clip on way quicker than I did yesterday. I swear yesterday it took me about 20 minutes. That one was about a minute. Anyway, that's what happens, I guess. Okay, so second camera just messed up. I'm gonna just pack a bit of, I just packed a bit of grease into the end of this hub. And I'm gonna pack a bit of grease into the end of this one. And then I'm gonna install it and put the last six bolts in. Okay, she's on. Get the last six in, and then I'm going to use my 10 mil socket to do them up, and we have a new rotor. Oh yeah, and there you have it. New brake rotor. Ooh, what's that noise? Oh, I just locked it, didn't I? Hang on, so I guess we'll see if I lock the other one, whether they actually spin together. Is that spinning? No. No? No. 